I'm Randy Robinson. Welcome to Life Today TV, special digital edition. I got a question. Does uh, your pastor make surfboards? Because if you went to Reality Church out near Santa Barbara, uh, yours would. I have Kate and Britt Merrick with me. Welcome. Thank you. And that's just too cool. My pastor makes surfboards, right? Yeah, you know, I, I never meant to be a pastor, but uh, I was born into a family that made surfboards. And 1969, my parents started Channel Island Surfboards, uh, became the biggest surfboard company in the world. And uh, it's all I ever wanted to do in my life. I was born and raised to do that. And then God kind of bamboozled me <laughs> and uh, called Kate and I into the ministry. So uh, we're doing both. We're still making surfboards, but pastoring full time. Started a church called Reality in 2003. It's now a family of churches. We've got churches in San Francisco, Los Angeles, right. Boston, uh, London, England, Honolulu. So, yeah. Okay, and I saw that. And my first thought was, okay, most people that do, you know, hey, let's put a campus across town over here and we'll put a campus over here. And maybe we'll put a campus in the next city. Yeah. How do you get to London? <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not the typical church plan. By plane. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, you know, we just felt like God called us, honestly. We, um, we didn't have a grand plan and we, we never would... Our, uh, bold enough to plan for something like that. But we just felt like God called us to those cities. We're from a small town on the coast, you know, near Santa Barbara, California, but he just kept calling us to start churches in places like San Francisco, Los Angeles, and London, and yeah. just kept doing it. And the latest one is in Honolulu, which I'm really happy about. Which totally makes sense. It makes sense. I've been waiting for that one a long time, but we finally you, got you, it. Does that give you an excuse to go out there? That gives me a, an excuse to go quite often. <laughs> so we're real happy about that. Have you caught, some, caught a few waves out there? Yeah, we spent a lot of time in Hawaii. We yeah. spend a lot of time in Hawaii as a family. It's a special Testing place Testing out the boards us. and checking on the church. Yep, it's always work for me. <laughs> research and development. <laughs> research and work. development. Rough, rough life you, yeah, you got there. Do Suffering. You, do you have a lot of surfing analogies in your sermons? Uh, you know, gosh. Uh, I talk about surfing a lot in my sermon. I don't think I use analogies because I, I don't want to miss all the other people that don't surf there, but I, I just I can't hide how much I love surfing. And it comes out all the time. And I, I try not to be like too much of a cliche. But. Don't No, but don't hide it, you know, because Jesus was talking to fishermen and he talked about fish, right? Yeah, you know, and Jesus walked on water, which he is... He didn't need a board. The basic, he didn't need a board. The basic, <laughs> that's surfing right there. But you're not Jesus, so you need a board. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> kind of, that's the that's the lesson. I tell you, your wife has a book, and we're going to talk about it. I would love to see you come back in a few years with a book that has sort of surfer parables. Oh, wow. So there's your task. All right. Wow. That's a good idea. Thanks. Better get on that. All right. I would read that. That's a good one. I, I would actually read I'll that. I'll give you a cut. No, don't do that. Just, <laughs> just come back. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, Kate, your book, And Still She Laughs. Yes. Unlike the surfing bit, which is, which is a lot of fun, this is heavy. It's heavy. <laughs> Define Joy in the Depths of Suffering is the subtitle because... Um, Four years ago, I lost my eight-year-old daughter to cancer. She had battled cancer since she was five years old. And it was one of those just heavy, radical times, a lot of suffering, a lot of pain for her. And then, um, you know, we did everything we could do for her medically, spiritually, everything. And she went home to be with Jesus four years ago in February, and it rocked me. It completely rocked me, yeah. um, both the suffering part and the, the loss part. And I just went down into a hole, basically a dark hole for several years. And eventually God kind of whispered to me and pulled me out. And this is the story of how I got from total bitterness to total joy. I'm just going to tell people, you, if you want to hear that, you, you just get the book because it's available now. Um, you know, uh, my, I lost my sister when she was 40. Mm -hmm. uh, would not, I mean, it, it, it's all bad, okay. Mm -hmm. But I've got four kids. Yeah. And I can't imagine, they're all adults now, barely. Um, that would be tough. But eight years old? Mm -hmm. eight, I mean, honestly. How does that change the way you view life? Hmm this temporal life? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I, think, I think it's twofold. I think when I was trapped in bitterness, I viewed life really bitterly. Um, I didn't believe God's goodness. I didn't believe God's goodness necessarily for me. Well, how does, God, how does a good God you know, right. let a child suffer yep. and die? Yep. And you were in the pastor, you were a pastor at the time, yes? Yep. How does God let 
a pastoral couple, sure. devoted their lives to him. Sure. How does he take their child mm -hmm. through such a sinister way and something he could heal? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And that's the question we were asking. Yeah. And we spent a lot of time asking that question. And boy, we sure got stuck when mm -hmm. that was our question. You know, why God, why, and how could you? We just got stuck, you know, because th there's just not an answer that's good enough, mm -hmm. honestly, you know, and people try to offer pseudo theological answers. God needed her more than you did uh, and no, all this I hate stuff. That one. I know. And no, it doesn't, I hate that one to the core. Really but, flimsy but one. E even, if, even if God were to try to explain to us as finite beings, here's why, you know, I don't know that we get that. And I don't know that it doesn't do anything to take away our pain. We just want our girl back. There's no answer sure. that's good enough. But when we were stuck in why, we, we just didn't get anywhere. And, and finally, we just, through the grace of God, realized that he was with us in the midst of our suffering. Mm -hmm. And we weren't going to know why. But as, if we begin to press into the fact that he was with us rather than demanding answers, you know, as finite humans, that's where we really started to get unstuck was when we mm -hmm. saw Christ's presence in our pain. Mm -hmm. And suddenly we discovered Christ to be more beautiful in our deep places of pain than we ever saw him to be before. Mm -hmm. And there was some sweetness to Jesus who suffered for us and gave himself for us. Paul called it the fellowship of his sufferings. There's some sweetness we experience in our suffering with him that was really, really profound and lifting mm -hmm. and just rescued us mm -hmm. from a really deep, dark place. And you know, it's funny because it started, I, I would say my journey to e emotional wellness if you will, um, kind of started with realizing I'm not alone. I'm not the only one who has ever suffered. And you feel like you are. You feel like, gosh, how come no one else I see is, is losing their kid? And, and you know, you just really get self-focused when, when you've experienced that kind of pain. And, um, and, you know, the enemy is probably like, yeah, you're the only one. And, you know, whispering in your ears. And, and um, a couple of years of that went by for me. A couple of years of, of that bitterness, of the asking of the why. And then, um, and then God just gently led me into the scriptures, into these women of great faith. And he said, you're not alone. You're not alone. Look at Sarah, wife of Abraham. She's bitter. She doesn't believe my goodness for her, but I am good. And he showed me, you're a lot like Sarah right now. You're mocking my goodness. And then he showed me Bathsheba, wife of Uriah. This is a woman who has had extreme suffering. She's had her husband murdered, she's been used and abused, and then her baby died. And then she's taken from this good life with a good man. The Bible says Uriah was one of the mighty men, one of David's mighty men. And now she's living alone, you know, probably in a harem in, in the palace. And so she kind of got her whole entire life ripped away from her yeah. and suffered great loss. And then God said, so you know what? You're not alone. Look at this woman, Beth. She was a woman of faith. She's experienced pain. And then he showed me Mary, mother of Jesus. This is like the ultimate example, human example, that's not Jesus, of, hey, this is a woman who just said, you know what? I'm gonna serve you, God, whatever it costs me. I'm gonna say yes to you. And I'm pretty sure Mary knew that what she was saying yes to when that angel came and said, you're gonna be mother of Messiah. I'm pretty sure she knew it was an easy street, that it was gonna come with a lot of hardship. It was gonna come with the loss of reputation and the loss of security and all these things that she gave up to say yes to Jesus. But God started saying, whispering to me and saying, hey, you know what? There's women of great faith. You're not alone. You can say, me too, when you think of Bathsheba and her loss. You can say, me too, when you think of Sarah and her bitterness. Mm -hmm. You could say, me too, when you think of Mary and the scary things she's endured. And that kind of like started this catalyst of, I'm not alone. And I saw how God walked these women through these hardships. And so I believe he's walking me through the same thing. And then ultimately, just like Britt was saying, Jesus said to me one day, hey, me too. I hurt too, I have suffered too, mm. and God knows what it's like to lose a child. You're not alone in this. Mm. And it changed everything for mm. us and for me personally. I always found it curious how, you know, the short verse, Jesus wept. Sure. Because <laughs> if I was Jesus, and I just walked in to where there was, they'd just put their brother, you know, down, mm -hmm. or laid him out rather, or put him in the tomb, I'd be laughing. Because I'd be like, I can't wait to see the look on their faces when he walks out. Sure. Of there. Right? I'd be sure. like, I'd be like, 
the happiest guy in the room, yeah. but Jesus wept. Yeah. He didn't weep because Lazarus was dead. He already knew he was dead. He, he could have gone quicker and healed him and he never would have died. Mm -hmm. He knew what was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. He wept, the only thing that makes sense to me is, is he wept because he felt the pain mm -hmm. That's right. of those that were, were mourning the loss of their And he, he stepped into their pain. He stepped mm -hmm. into Martha and Mary, yeah. Lazarus' sister's pain. That's right. what he did. And he felt their pain with them and wept with them. Mm -hmm. In the same way, uh, God said to Israel, in all of your suffering, I suffered with you. And that's exactly what we discovered, is that Christ is present in our yeah. deepest places of pain in the most beautiful way, if we'll be open to it, yeah. if we'll let him be. You know what we do in our bitterness is we lock him out. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do with our whys, is we hold him at, at hand's distance, arm's yeah. length, and we say, until you give us a why, you're out. But once we surrender that mm -hmm. and say, we're not gonna know why, God, but we believe that you're good, we invite him into that place of pain, he comes. Mm -hmm. The scriptures say that God is a God of all comfort. Mm -hmm. And we really discovered that. That's good. I wanna throw something in and just tell me if, if you think this might be right. So it was a short time between the pain when Lazarus was, was resurrected, between the pain and the resurrection, right? Um, but Paul promises a resurrection for believers, mm. which means that in the scope of things, eternity being a heck of a lot longer than this life, you're gonna be with your daughter, I'm gonna be with my sister, yeah. because we have that promise of resurrection. It's just the time between the, the weeping yeah. and the resurrection is longer. A few more years. Yeah. Yeah. Still short in the scope of eternity. Sure. Yeah. But it's just, it's, it's a little while longer, right? Yeah. Does, does, does that ever occur to you? Does that yeah, absolutely. say anything to you, you know? Does it? Yeah, Paul, Paul speaks about that in Romans chapter 8, you know, where he says that all of creation groans, right, with this, this curse that we're under, longing for the coming of Messiah. And he says in that same passage, he says, but you know what? This present suffering isn't worthy to be compared with the glory that we shall see. Speaking of the coming of Christ and the resurrection, he calls this, the, the things of this life in another space, momentary light affliction in light of the glory that we will see in the promises of Christ and the resurrection from the dead. Mm -hmm. So that's hope that's an anchor to our soul that we hold on to. And you know, whenever you're suffering, the, the question to how long is, is, is too long is, <laughs> it's too long it's already. All, you yeah. know it's I mean? all too long, right? It's too time. long. But day, Peter day. wrote in First Peter and said, after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace will himself comfort, strengthen, confirm, and establish you. Have you experienced that? That's exactly what we've experienced. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that we don't still feel pain. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that we don't miss our little girl. It doesn't mean that we don't have dark days, but it does mean that in the midst of it, God has been with us and he's done a good work. Mm -hmm. There's a good work that he accomplishes in our pain if we'll let him do so. Mm -hmm. And then we hold on to what you mentioned, the promise of the resurrection. Man, that is glory truth every yeah. day that we hold on to. You know, uh, blessed are those who mourn. Yeah. Mm -hmm doesn't make sense. You know, the word makarios that we translate blessed yeah. is the same happy. word as happy. Right. Mm -hmm. Happy are those who mourn. Jesus says, happy are those who mourn, which makes no sense to me right. at all without the rest of the sentence. Mm. For they shall be comforted. They shall be comforted. Yeah. I don't right. see any happiness in the morning. I see yeah. the happiness. Mm -hmm. Exactly what you're saying. Absolutely. When we let him in, we're comforted. Yeah. What's your church's website? Do you put your sermons online? Yeah, we do. You can find us at uh, realitycarpenteria.com. Okay. Carpenteria is a little town that we're from near Santa Barbara. Um, or you could just go to jesusisreality.com and you'll find all of our churches there. All the churches there. Yeah. So London, LA, San Francisco. Yeah, all of them. Uh, Honolulu. Honolulu. And if you got time yeah. to watch the internet, because if you live in Honolulu, do you really have time for media? I don't know. I hope not. I hope, I hope not too. I hope not. And for your website, for uh, the book, people that want to read the book. Yep, kmerrick.com. Oh, wonderful. Check it out. What a great couple. What incredible depth they've been forced to, uh, to realize in their own lives. Um, and if you're suffering, learn how to laugh. <clears throat> learn how to laugh. Check out their website. And if you want to hear a little bit more from them, you can check them out when they're on the broadcast show of Life Today. That's available now at lifetoday.org. Thank you for watching and sharing this interview. Be sure to check out the social media for Life Today Television, and you can connect with me on Facebook and Twitter. 
And if you haven't already subscribed or followed this channel, do it now so you can see more of our great guests.